Hi everyone, this is Khan Deng here, and today we're going to talk about Between Revolutions, one of the exciting films in the 13th EU Human Rights Film Days program. And the director of the film, Vlad Petri, is our guest today. Hi Vlad, welcome. Hi, hi. Thank you for uh, presenting the film in the festival and for inviting me to talk about the film. Oh, thank you for joining us today. So, uh, Between Revolutions, such an exciting film. Uh, is a very uh, intriguing documentary about two women sending letters to each other over the years uh, from two different revolutions, actually. The story begins in the late 70s, and we met Maria from Romania and Zahra from Iran as close friends we, who studied together at the Bucharest Medical School. And how did you come up with this idea to make a film about them? So I started uh, this project after a discussion I had with my mother regarding her student years. She studied medicine in Romania and she had many colleagues from the Middle East. Uh, uh, during that period, uh, Romania was a communist country and was part of the non-aligned movement, meaning that students from uh, the Middle East came to study in Romania and from North Africa and other non-aligned countries, anti-imperialist uh, societies. And engineers and, work, uh, and workers went to these countries to build infrastructure and factories, engineers and workers from Romania. So it was like mut mutual exchange between between yeah. uh, between these countries so i was curious how romania which was a country and still is in uh, the margins of europe on the border eastern europe and it was a very closed country uh, this ceausescu regime how was perceived by someone coming uh, from the east uh, and i wanted to play with these notions of east and west and the global south and and europe and uh, for me, it was really intriguing this, uh, let's say, this connection between different uh, parts of the world and seeing uh, these pictures in my mother's albums with uh, colleagues from uh, from Iran and uh, Lebanon and Palestine. And I, I started uh, thinking about about this this story. And uh, I can say there are many elements from her life in the character of Maria. And uh, at the beginning, I wanted to make a personal film and say, let's say, more documentary. But uh, after a while, I was thinking to make a collective portrait of women like my mother. And it became, let's say, more fictional because it's a film in the hybrid yeah. form. Yeah. So uh, only the Maria inspired by your mom? Or yes. even in Zahra too? I don't know. Zahra, yeah, it's more... Yeah, yes. Maria Maria is inspired by the life of my mother, uh, but also by the life of other women in Romania. And Zahra is more inspired from, from books, cinema, from talks with Iranian women. Uh, yeah. We also had consultants in, in the film from Iran. And uh, both texts were written by a very well-known Romanian uh, female writer, Lavinia Braniște, whose books are, are centered on, on strong female characters. Yeah. So we are seeing lots of rare footages from both from Romania and Iran. Uh, what were the challenges of working on these archival footages? Was it hard in the editing stuff or was it hard to find them? How can you reach from... the footages, archival footages? Yeah, it was not so easy, especially regarding Iran, where after many tries, we found a person willing to help us that really liked the project. And it was more than a producer. It was archive, not only archive producer, it was also we became friends and consultant for the film. And uh, but it was it was not easy because Iran, it's very careful on the archives and not to share them with people from other parts of the world that then that can recon contextualize them. So, yeah, but from the beginning, I wanted to have uh, this intimate story between these two women uh, presented on the backdrop of the of the propaganda, official images produced in these countries. I didn't want images from the West, from Europe, that have a colonial okay. look on other countries. So I really wanted from the beginning to have images produced in Romania and, and Iran. And for Romania part, it was easier, but uh, yeah, as, as I said, for Iran, uh, uh, it took almost one year to find the right person, but in the end, we were really happy of this collaboration. So uh, I want to talk about the writing because I'm 
actually so curious about the writing process of the film because at the beginning we are considering that Maria and Zahra are just real individuals. But then at some point we realize that uh, both of these women and their letters are just fictional. How did you decide that the film should hide this fact from the audience for a while? And how do you see the effect on of this choice on the narrative of the film? I can say, I will start uh, with the end. I, I, I can say that most of the people don't have a problem with this because audiences are open now to different forms of cinema. It's not like in the past, just documentary and fiction. In my opinion, some fiction are more documentaries uh, <laughs> than, uh, uh, than uh, you know, than, than, than fiction. And I can think now about the work of Abbas Kiarostam in Iran or uh, yeah. uh, Christy Pu in Romania or even Nuri Bilge Jailan, which is very interested in character Characters and it uh, has this documentary uh, vision inside. And sometimes it's uh, when you see a documentary so well edited, uh, not so, I mean, so manipulated in terms of editing and music and drama, it's yeah. almost like a fiction. You use their, their life. So for me, it's not really, really a border. But uh, the thing is that we tried different things and uh, we, we decided that it's, uh, it's better for the people to let them engage and to believe in this story. Like uh, in a fiction, film you want to be with a character you you want if you if you love a character not uh, you don't want something bad to happen you know to be killed in this uh, classic uh, uh, classic movies you you go with a with a character so so we wanted audience to be really engaged and that's why we didn't put at the beginning yeah. uh, how the the letters were written and we gave an idea at the beginning because we we used this this quotation from this uh, very good writer from Iran Azar Nafisi where it says you need imagination in order to imagine in a yeah. future that doesn't exist. It's like a hint, uh, imagination, a future that doesn't exist that can be, you know, fictional. But we decided to put it in the end also and not to let audiences believe that it was uh, it was real to, to, to give them in the structure of the film. I, I won't be present at all the Q&As to explain so that uh, we <laughs> didn't want to trick the people. But... Uh, but uh, um, uh, for me, it's, it's the it's the best decision in this case because we let people engage with the, with the characters and 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 to believe in this possible story. For me, it's not like how this story was bef between Maria and Zakra, but how it could have been this 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 amazing connection between two women, thousands of kilometers apart from communist Romania and Islam, Iran, that found this this uh, great solidarity and connection and to fight oppression in these times. Yeah. Actually, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if the Zahra and Maria are fictional or not, because you're documenting the two revolutions and two countries, cultures through a f female gaze, actually. So maybe we can talk about the relationship between Maria and Zahra, because, you know, uh, this is not just like two friends sending letters, each other talking each other. At some point, these letters sound like some kind of love letter love letters maybe we can say so uh when you created the relationship between maria and zahra did you intentionally put this obscurity to to the film uh i like films that that have some ambiguity in them and not everything is explained like in hollywood for example <laughs> the disappearance of zakra and their their, uh, their relation is not is not very clear but of course there are hints maria and zakra got closer and closer together during the writing process writing was done in parallel with editing it, it was some sometimes like a double editing we found some images we edited and we changed the text and then the the, the edits in the text uh, triggered uh, edits in the in the image. It was this double connection. So the characters got closer and closer together and um... We were thinking also about how queer people were marginalized in both Romania during communism because it was an article forbidden these relations and also in Iran also uh, uh, before the revolution and after the revolution. It's a, it's a big issue there. So, but we didn't... Um, we didn't want to, to you know to state in the, in the film or to because it's also um, I, it, it's really hard to define, you know, uh, where uh, physical love starts, uh, you know, it's like, of course. Uh, it's not a clear line how a relation can be defined queer, you know, it's especially in this film where you don't see the bodies, the audiences construct the, the closeness of the bodies through text, uh, images, emotions, 
And I think the story got very emotional also when we used music and we put poetry in it. So it really, yeah, and right. from what I saw, some people in the audience say it's clear queer story. Some people say for me, it's not. Uh, sometimes older people that used to write letters and letters are more emotional and they put more words. So, yeah. But I think it's interesting because a film, uh, you, if you think about some issues, then sometimes the film can surprise you. I mean, the trajectory, how, where the film goes. So the film was wow. also screened in, in queer film festivals. So, yeah, it, yeah, it has its own life. So it's already an answer to your question like this. So I think uh, we're out of time, but uh, I was just wanted to ask you uh, that, you know, uh, as you mentioned, you work with Lavinia Buranista. Uh, on the writing of the film and the le writing on the, of the letters, right? Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, we we know there's an inspiration from great feminist poets from Iran and Romania, uh, such as uh, Nina Kassian and Fru Feruzad. Uh, how do you think they help with the emotional intensity of the film? Watching all these archives and and knowing Iran because I, I traveled uh, I traveled to Iran I have many friends I know poetry is part of the Iranian culture of the Persian culture it's something really deep uh, deep in the culture and I saw that in the films and so um, that gradually came the idea let's put these these uh, these uh, fragments of poems of Farouk and we also find this connection that it's like these characters like a bridge between these countries and between these 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 poets and I think it really helps the the film starts with a poem actually and uh, it has uh, other inserts also and uh, it really helps in the beginning it was a more uh, let's say called uh, intellectual film with a lot of propaganda and a lot of heavy text but then as i said their stories uh, became the 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 the, the uh, path of the characters uh, and the uh, the characters themselves became close uh, one to, to to another and also po poetry and music helped uh, on this connection and i think this kind of connection helps the film to 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 travel to universal to to general audiences because the film had a really good uh, festival path it traveled to many countries yeah. that didn't know exactly the uh, historical and political situations in romania and iran and also going back to a previous question of yours we got uh, um, really good uh, remarks from Iran in terms of the character. People really connect with with Zahra. Zahra. Some even told me if I'm uh, if I'm Iranian or I don't know, like uh, <laughs> half joking because they were. And I met people also after screenings crying Iranians. They are saying that it's oh. it's really impressive. And some of them younger people didn't know these images uh, the, they weren't available to them and the connection with their history even if it's done from a romanian and outsider it really worked for them so i'm really glad uh, about this of course and that's a great feedback for you too so thank you for being with us so uh, do you have any message for the turkish audience I'm really happy that the film screens in Turkey because it's one of the countries that I I, I feel the most close to. Um, I even if it's uh, like uh, it's Bulgaria between Romania and Turkey in terms <laughs> yeah. of geography, I always feel uh, feel so close to to the kind to of Turkey. a neighbors. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, we're neighbors and uh, we're friends. And for me, it's always a pleasure to to come and visit Turkey and be inspired by the culture. And I'm also inspired by the by the great uh, writers uh, like Orhan Pamuk or Elif Shafak or uh, Burhan Sonmez or other great writers and also by Turkish cinema. So I'm really happy that, that my film travels to this, uh, this great country. We're so happy to have, have your film and have you here today. So thank you very much again. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks.